Okay, in this video we're going to be checking out the new Caddx Turtle 2 camera. So this is an update to the original Turtle, and they fixed a lot of the problems that I saw in the first version, and uh, I mentioned a lot of the sort of interesting flaws that it had. Obviously there were workarounds and stuff to, to get it working, and I did get some pretty good settings, and decent image quality I thought. But now they have a version 2, and they've incorporated all the fixes that I suggested. And we'll just go over the differences. If you want to see the version 1 video that has a little more detail, um, I'll put a card in the corner. You guys can watch that. I'm just going to cover the differences between the version 1 and the version 2. The biggest difference here, obviously, is going to be the layout of the board. That was a big issue uh, with only three holes lining up. That was a problem for mounting uh, this board into a lot of stacks because you could only use three of the standoffs. Now uh, they fixed that's a standard 20 by 20 now, so the one hole being kind of offset. Uh, they still don't have the um, the little uh, micro SD card protector thing. I looked in here, it's not in here. A little bag of extras. That uh, the split mini comes with a little like metal piece that will hold the SD card in. So you, uh, you probably still want to stick with using some electrical tape to hold that card in place in case you crash. Otherwise, that card's going to be gone. Still one button operation here. Now they've added a microphone. That was a thing that was really missing. We'll have to see what the audio quality is like on this. It's going to obviously, uh, on, the, on the split mini, the audio is terrible, so most people just turned off the audio anyway. We'll have to see if this is any good. They kind of left this kind of hanging, so it could be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, it might, well, like I, I think uh, for me it'll be good because I can then wrap this thing in a little bit of foam to cut down the wind noise and then kind of stuff it somewhere. Um, you could use obviously some foam tape or something like that. Uh, I see that they added some uh, solder points here, and these four solder points correspond to these four pins here for um, power, uh, ground, video, and I believe the OSD joystick as well. And so that's the four pins that come here. So I guess you have the option to do a direct solder or use the plug. And if you want to keep the board a low profile, I suppose you could remove the plug and just use the solder points if you wanted to keep it super low profile. So there's two options there. They've uh, fixed the, or they've uh, modified the, uh, I guess this cable here, the stranded cable, and they've wrapped it in some, some kind of tape, which is good. Keeps it still flexible and you have, uh, you know, uh, different lengths here for mounting it, but the less chance of this stranded wire getting snagged on something and, and you're breaking the wire. So I think that's an improvement. Now they also um, changed the lens, and the very first one that I got, uh, the lenses had some issues where it had like a haze around the edges and some sort of artifacting. So supposedly they've corrected that, so we'll see if this lens is any better than the uh, version 1. And then supposedly they've adjusted the settings as well, so I've been told, so that the defaults are better than um, uh, what they were before, because the, the, the image before was way over sharpened. So we'll see what that's like. So I'm going to plug this in real quick and look at the settings on the monitor. Uh, obviously there's no need for former updates and they actually mentioned that here. So uh, don't, do not upgrade this if you get this new version. The firmware has got the latest version already on there. Okay, so I got it plugged in and the cable comes out of the bottom. I believe that's the same as before. And it looks like the OSD is the same as well. I don't have a micro SD card in there. It looks like the menu looks the same, same as well here. So it doesn't look like they changed too much here. Obviously you can change your TV ratio. So I'm gonna I actually prefer 4.3. And image effect here. So all these are five still. So let's see if uh, if these defaults mean something different. I'll just fly it again on the defaults. It does look like it's a little bit brighter. Mm. Can't tell too much about the sharpness though. It's hard. It's hard to tell just from looking at the monitor. You know, I'll have to look at the actual recorded image later. So we'll just exit out of here. But it looks like all the settings are the same as before. You got the exposure value, field of view. You know, all these are the same as before. I'll change that to 60. And. So we still have 60 frames, 30 frames, and 720, 120. So that's all the same. And then I'm going to turn auto recording on. It's, that was on. That was off. I, I don't remember. So I usually turn that on so that it starts recording as soon as I plug in the battery. So all this looks the same as before. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the uh, OSD here. 
And let's go into the OSD settings and let's see if there's a way to. Okay, so if you if you hit the up button, it's easier than going through all the letters. Uh, turn off the voltage and the power on time and let's save. Okay, so now we have no OSD on the bottom because I used the beta flight OSD, so I don't need that. So yeah, so go ahead and get this on here onto a uh, one of my crafts and we'll fly it and we'll get some uh, video footage for you to see if it's any better or worse than before. We're going to take a look at the uh, FPV feed first here. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of electrical noises getting through on my Acrobat setup here. I, I didn't put a capacitor in yet. I was going to be doing that at some point. Uh, after basically, I'm going to modify my battery plug and put it on the end there, but I haven't done that yet. So, uh, you're seeing more electrical noise in this FPV feed than in my other setup that I was uh, reviewing the Turtle 1 on that had a capacitor and more filtration. This one doesn't. So, um, yeah, it just tells you that basically they haven't added any additional filtration on the uh, Turtle circuit board. So, uh, if you don't have any like uh, capacitors or uh, some sort of filtration uh, coming off your video transmitter, you're going to get a lot of um, motor noise, EC noise coming into your FPV feed. Uh, it didn't bother me too much. It actually looks worse in the in the Fat Shark recording than it did in the goggles. But I uh, just wanted to let you know that's where that's where that, that's where that's from, and that's why you didn't see that earlier in the uh, Turtle One video. Uh, it's just based, it's because of the setup. Now, in, in terms of the uh, audio here, I think that it's. Um, well, it's okay. Audio is way better than the, the Runcam Split Mini. Uh, that was completely unusable. This is somewhat usable. I was able to um, lower the volume of the of the, of the basically the, the audio and do a little bit of manipulation on, on basically uh, using some high pass and low pass cutoffs on the audio track and in Premiere, so it sounds better. Obviously, it doesn't sound as good as a GoPro session, but it's way better than what's on coming out of this, but I think that uh, if I maybe add some more foam, cut down the windows a little bit more, it might be a little bit better, but I think the audio is usable, but again, not not, not great, but definitely better than what's on the uh, Runcam Split Mini. Now, in terms of the uh, high definition uh, video here, it looks like they've corrected the over sharpening, so there's not as much uh, over sharpening artifacts as there were previously so of course these are all the you know, default settings here so they may have altered the default settings now I think that the saturation is still a little bit too much for my liking I might I think I might be reducing that and I may even reduce the sharpness a little bit more I'm kind of wondering if maybe they have um, perhaps made the focus of the lens a little bit uh, fuzzier so it's not as sharp so they've kind of done that with the lens perhaps I'm not 100% sure, just looking at the footage, I'd have to look at some more samples to really know. Uh, but it definitely doesn't look as over sharpened as it did uh, in the version 1. Um, in terms of the brightness contrast, I think those look pretty similar. I think the saturation is about the same as before, so I think the biggest difference here is the sharpness. Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, I'll have some more, obviously some more sample videos. I'll try, I'll try to manipulate the settings a little more for a future video. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.